everybody. Here we are in 2021 in another lockdown. So Michelle, Nat and I thought we'd do another little series of videos um, with some business leaders to help you to understand what's going on in other organisations and help hopefully we can all learn from each other. So today I'd like to introduce um, Naomi from Benedon and she's going to say a little bit about herself and then we're going to get into the questions. So um, Naomi, would you like to introduce yourself please? Hi there, I'm Naomi Thompson, I'm the Head of Organisation Development for Benedon Health, we're a not-for-profit healthcare mutual um, based in York, we've got about 315 staff at the moment um, in our York site and we've got our own hospital down in Kent, um, but we also have um, a whole network of hospitals and we kind of sit um, providing off affordable alternative um, health insurance for our members of which we've got about 817,000 across the UK. And what's your role, Naomi? So predominantly, my role is to ensure that we've got the, the capability in our organisation to deliver our plan um, and to make Benenden a great place to work, which is something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, and for me, the role that I play in that is I do put the health and well-being right at the epicentre of our OD because I'm a firm believer with the amount of change that's going on in the world and the change that's going on in our organisation, that does have a fundamental impact on everybody. So you can't drink from an empty cup. So, you know, we are a health and wellbeing organisation. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're always really good at this stuff. You know, like with the NHS, you've got people who care for people and um, don't always necessarily put themselves first. So it's not saying that we're really good at this stuff, but we do give it a lot of attention and um, something I'm really proud of. So for me, it was around, um, I think everyone would say this about how adaptable we are, you know, as humans, um, we had to very quickly learn different ways of working. Um, we've had to homeschool our children, I'm doing that again. So um, probably finding skills that we didn't know we had um, and skills that we definitely know we haven't got. So I think that, um, level, key stage level two maths for me is definitely not a skill I've got. So, um, but yeah, in terms of how adaptable we are, one of the things that we noticed in 2020 is something that we've probably been striving for for a few years at Benenden is that conversation. So when you're saying to somebody, how are you? They go, oh, I'm fine, you know, fine. I always think it's an acronym for feeling insecure, neurotic and emotional. And fine, is, is, it doesn't tell you anything. But what we're starting to see, um, particularly at Benenden, is when people are saying, how are you? And people are actually saying, do you know what? I'm not great today. And then that can open up a different conversation. And, you know, and I think that's probably where we've been trying to get to for quite a long time now with lots of work that we've been doing on mental health. But I think the pandemic has actually really opened up that kind of conversation, which is so important because there's lots of people during the pandemic that we know through our own research, through our own insights in our organization that have been impacted with their mental health who have never been impacted before. And they're the ones who don't know where to get support. They don't really know what's going on. They don't know how to go and have that conversation and get the help. So it's so important. And Michelle and I, we've had these conversations a few times about check in on your extroverts, because those are the ones who come into the office every day or you know, love bouncing off ideas. I get all my energy in the office on my team. So this kind of style of working is not my idea of, is of fun. So, you know, to have an OD team who are there to make sure that we we're creating this great space for everybody else, it's been quite tough for those, a real challenge, because they probably felt it as probably more so than other, other areas. So I'm really proud of the team in terms of how they responded to that, because they have responded to it really well. But yeah, we've seen a different dynamic in mental health, definitely, not just within our organisation, but we've seen it across, across the world. Mm. It's interesting that actually, isn't it? Because I, um, I think I've heard quite a few people talking about that. I'm, uh, you know, are you okay? Um, and that a lot of people have really picked up on that. Actually, are you really okay? You know, because people will often say, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. But then actually saying, are you really okay? 
and then people go actually no I'm not I'm really really rubbish actually Mm -hmm. um and how important that's been in in 2020 I think that's been quite a a theme I think and a lot of people realizing how important it is to to check in I was only talking to a company a few weeks before Christmas who were saying yeah do you know what we've we've stopped our one-to-ones and that's probably been a really big mistake (laughs) it's like because that's the only way you've really got chance to check in on people isn't it and checking in on managers and individuals making sure that they are okay yeah yeah tiny bit of vulnerability is so important and I think that's one thing that we've done really well you know when we went into lockdown lockdown one um our CEO sent out a daily email and that went on right until September and that's actually quite a lot of work sending out a daily email but his view was if it's if it's reaching one person, if there's one person at home feeling isolated who gets some solace from this email, then it's worth it. And, you know, he would more than he would share the days that he's having a bad day, a bad day today. You know, COVID is massively impacting people, are losing people. And, you know, so to have your CEO saying I've had a bad day today really helps set the tone across the organisation. that It's OK to have a bad day. That is we're not superhumans you know we've got to we've got to accept the fact that we're working in a very changing environment and probably more so now we've moved into lockdown three you know we are seeing huge impacts of how this pandemic is impacting our workforce you know we've had people who have contracted it who have really really suffered fortunately we have not had losses um, but again I know people in my networks who have so, you know, there's the whole raft of that kind of support that's really needed for people, more so in lockdown three than there was in lockdown one, because particularly in York, the numbers are so high, you know, the, the, it, we've had quite a few of our workforce being impacted by it. Hmm. I think um, vulnerability was something that sprung to my mind as well, Naomi, when you were talking about that. And of course, for those of us that work in the OD field, we have been for about a decade been talking about vulnerability is such an important leadership trait and I think probably the situation has enabled some of those leaders that have been frightened to do that that ability and almost permission to do that Mm -hmm. Um, and and I was listening to Nicola Sturgeon the other day and not about her politics but actually that she said really honestly you know I made a mistake I took my mask off at a funeral I forgot I had a lapse in concentration and I thought that's okay. I'd rather you were just honest and human like the rest of us. And I thought it was a really powerful way that she managed to do that. And I think the other thing I was going to talk about is um, around resilience. And one of the case studies around resilience is what we call bricolage. And if nobody's heard of that, it's the French term, which is kind of make, do and mend. And I think as well, we've had to force ourselves to move away from these perfect standards. And many employers saying to staff, just do what you can do. Just just manage. Whatever you can do is okay. Don't feel like you've got to do a 12-hour day and homeschool for five hours. Oh, and bake soda bread while you're at it. Oh, <laughs> banana. You know, actually, it, it's okay. Just do what you can. Yeah. Yeah. I think most people respond really well to that. And I think that's one thing that's really key is that you'll you'll get the long-term benefits through loyalty. You know, again, I know individuals who are working for employers who haven't looked after them and, you know, that as soon as it's over, I'm off, you know, because uh, and I think that's kind of you, you reap what you sow, don't you? At the end of the day, you look after your people during this time and when when everything gets back to normal, because it will get back to some level of normality, a different normal, but it will do. You will get that back in, div- you know, with dividends at the end of it. And I'm, I'm a real big believer of that. I think that's such a great point. I think that there's a lot, I think there's a lot that are going to suffer the consequences later this year. Because And we're already hearing stories, aren't we, of people that are, are, are voting with their feet because their company hasn't done the right thing by them. And I think, you know, that's one of the great things about Benenden. I think people are, you've, you know, you often say this, they're at the heart of what you do. And I think that shines through and, and then it has a, a really positive impact in the long run, doesn't it? Absolutely. We've changed our vision this year. So our vision, our opening statement now is that we put our people first. So every decision we make is with their well-being, you know, with thoughts of that. And that can lead to really tough decisions, you know, things like our, our operating hours and things like that. We've, we've had to make some tough decisions, but they've been the right decisions for our people. 
So, you know, it's sort of balancing, you know, that commercialism with, with the people. And it is, it is tough. It is tough. It is difficult. And it doesn't always land in where everybody wants it to be. You know, we are a business. We, we are there to service our members. We can't just close our doors. Um, but at the same time, you know, one of the key things for us was we we have these champions. We've got these health and well-being champions and they've been absolutely phenomenal because they've been the eyes and ears of our business. And we meet every two weeks and we say, OK, what's going on in your corner of the world? And they give us that feedback. They tell us the stuff that we're not hearing, the unsaid. You know, and again, going back to lockdown one, you know, we didn't know that people were really fearful of job security. It was nothing to do with what was going on in our world, but it was more to do with how um, people were impacted in their own households, their neighbours, their friends, being furloughed, losing their jobs. And we were like, we can remedy this really, really quickly, you know, with some, with some really good communications. And we did. And, you know, it just gives people assurances. And I think that's been really important is making sure that while we're all working virtually is that you have those networks and that you're kind of making sure that you've got every ground covered. You know, I've heard some horror stories. I've heard, you know, organisations who furloughed all their mental health first aiders. And it's just been, you know, sends a really clear message to your workforce, doesn't it? That kind of like you're really important, but not that important. And you know, sometimes you make mistakes and it's okay to, oh, we didn't realise we, we furloughed all of those individuals. But putting it right, like going back to what you said, Nat, we're in a period of forgiveness as well. Just say you've made a mistake and, and, and put it right. And I think that's so important with people at the moment because employers are under so much scrutiny and we've got responsibility, you know, and I think that's really important as well. Our CEO committed when we went into lockdown one that he was going to communicate daily to our people and he did and he communicated daily until about September and even then we've kind of moved into sort of three times a week and then slowly moved into into weekly and we'll revisit that again now we've gone back into lockdown his view was if I'm helping one person who's at home on their own feeling isolated then it's worth my time writing this email every single day and that's been so important and the other thing that we did was we've, we've got champions across our organisation and they're real cross-functional individuals, um, different types of roles, and they've really been the eyes and ears of our business. And that's been really important because there's things that go on even more so when you're working virtually, conversations that are probably had that you're not aware of. And in particularly in lockdown one, where lots of organisations were furloughing, making redundancies, People have, even despite the fact that we weren't talking about those things, the fact that we weren't talking about it was causing people to feel anxious. And that was stuff that was fed back through the champions. And we went, oh my goodness, we haven't even addressed that. So we should address that and give assurances that no one was going to be furloughed, that there was definitely, you know, as far as we could see, there was going to be no impact to our kind of structures. And that just gave people assurances that didn't have to worry about that. You know, you can you can not take that out of your kind of circle of concern, as it were. And that really helped. And I think that's and that's worked. It's really worked really well for us all the way through the pandemic to this certain point now where I'm starting to work on a digital well-being pledge with those champions about, OK, so what is it that's making us feel this exhausted? What can, what's in our power to change? So we're making certain commitments across the organisation to make sure our meetings don't last more than 45 minutes, that we make sure that we have a break, that we have this kind of protected hour every day where no one's allowed to put meetings in. So whatever happens, you know, it's a four pound now to put a meeting in the diary between 12 and 1 so that people can get the lunch, they can get their exercise, they can catch up on their emails, do whatever it is that they want to do, but they're not going to be in a meeting. And um, so certain things like that, which again has come back from the champions. Mm. Um, in terms of our members, again, we've got great feedback from our members because we've gone out and communicated. There's been certain restrictions in terms of our services, um, but we've worked really hard with our partners to put more services in there. So what, how people can help themselves at home. So you might not be able to get into a physio department right now, but here's some exercises that you can do. We've done lots of things on well-being and um, to help our members, mindfulness, you know, Pilates. So, yeah, the communications have been a real key element for us. We've got an amazing team and they've done an absolutely fantastic job throughout this, um, this situation so far. 
it's 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 interesting actually Naomi you're talking there about when you didn't communicate as well and the the stories then that people create I've just run a session today on leading through change and we were talking about that in there that we forget sometimes don't we we think we're okay you know we're not gonna have to furlough and do these things but we forget sometimes that other people might still have those thoughts and I was only saying the other day I haven't for ages talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs but more than ever this last year I've been talking about those basic needs and safety being such a paramount one for people that they're not feeling safe when they go out because of COVID but security around their jobs as well when a lot of people around them are losing them we kind of need to keep filling in those gaps I think sometimes we forget don't we so I think that's a, a great you know great recognition that uh, that that's something you really needed to plug yeah yeah Maslow and cycle as well it's one thing you know it's always well-meaning that people say you know when people are feeling a sense of loss for whatever that is and loss can be you know huge and it can be small and but you know while we're going through lots of losses which we are at the moment it's really easy for people to say I'll get some perspective and I always think you know if you give that person some space just to recognize that loss and recognize the emotion and you know talk them through the grief cycle let them have their moment of loss, let them kind of not wallow in it, but give them the space to talk about it. Once they've verbalized it, they're probably going to let it go and get some perspective anyway. But it always makes me interested. People say, oh, I get some perspective. Well, do you know what? Let them have the moment. Let them kind of grieve that loss because it is a lot. We've all lost liberties again. You know, we, I was, I spent a good Monday night sulking about the fact that we're back into homeschooling. I let myself have that time and choose the morning. I got up, positive pants back on, get on with it. Um, but, you know, you kind of got to go through that grief cycle. So they're really two interesting frameworks that we've used. Very good. I love your one hour gap in the day. I think I'm going to mm. do this because I've been very aware of um, them, my team needing to have outdoor exercise when it's daylight, myself included. And actually that's the solution, isn't it? We, we have had, we have been doing that and encouraging each other to do that, but um, yeah. yeah. I think that's like, the strongest feedback. Uh, really good. Got now, people are struggling because, you know, go back to lockdown one, you know, and you had your children, it was quite light on a night. You could go for a walk at the end of the day. Whereas it's, you know, we've got all the elements now. It's been raining, it's been snowing, it's icy. You know, it's so easy to kind of stay in. And I think that's been really important. And it's so simple as well, you know, just by looking that hour, you say you can go out even more so now you've got your children at home, you can go out and have a walk and stuff. It's just been quite monumental for individuals. So, and just having that space in the day. We'd all be doing that anyway. Hmm? You know, we've all got into the habit of just working for the whole time rather than having an hour off at lunchtime. We should all be doing that anyway. Mm. Nat, I know, you... I know. Yeah, I was just going to, um, it was nice to hear Naomi really um, pick up the themes that we talked about in our earlier series. Um, and you and Michelle will both smile because, you know, I always talk about certainty around communication. And it was great to hear Naomi talk about that. You know, what you do know, share. Mm. And I know it's uncertain, but it will help people to know what, what you know. Um, and, and I think the other part for me um, is really about that honesty. And if you don't know, you don't know. But tell mm -hmm. people you don't know, uh, not that you're hiding it, you know, because they will make up their own stories. They will pick up their own thing in that. Um, and I think just picking up the point about an hour for lunch, um, I am actually very disciplined on that. And as you two both know, I always have been. And that's because I got my fingers badly burnt about five years ago um, and I was very close to burnout and doing ridiculous hours. So I've stopped and had my lunch today with uh, my children as part of school lunch. And it is so important. Mm. Did you do your Joe Wicks video as well this morning? Uh, not this morning, but we will be back on him next week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> conversations with my team you know we went into 20 left 2020 plan into 2021 nothing's really changed I think in terms of flexibility but even more so after Monday night's announcement um you know com completely being flexible as much as we possibly can without obviously a detriment to our members accepting that you know this this is a this is a tougher lockdown because of the season um and I think really it's about supporting our managers, 
Now, and this is something that I'm quite passionate about because um, I, you know, I've lots of friends who are managers, lots of people in networks, and I think they're doing an amazing job. And, you know, particularly people who hit a certain age and end up in management are probably that kind of what we call squeeze middle. So you've got younger children or older children and parents that need care, got caring. So loads of stuff that's going on in the background and yet we're coming to work and there's more required of us than ever because we've got this tiny little box and we've got to understand the welfare of what's going on with our team to navigate them through all these changes. And I think we've put so much on managers um, and we need to check in on them. They're not superhumans just because we've got a manager in the job title. So we kind of maybe too late and maybe in hindsight, if I was going to do 2020 again, we did lots of stuff to put some tools and strategies in place for our managers. We didn't actually give them a space to come together and go, okay, how are you doing? But we did do that in November last year, and we're going to be doing so much more of that this year. Starting next week, we've got these connect sessions that we're putting into the diaries where we can bring managers together. It's a safe place, an opportunity to share messages across the business, share best practice, you know, and kind of support each other because I think that's really, really important because you know your manager has so much impact on an individual you know we know from our own research the impact a manager has on an individual has seven times more impact than anything that we can do as a health and well-being intervention and if your manager's burnt out um that's not gonna be a great experience they're not listening they're not empathizing they're not doing and they're not being at their best so for me that is huge a huge focus for me for 2021 is making sure that we look after our managers we give them the, the skills the tools and the space to, um, to, to be at their best and try to be at their best. And when they're not at their best, that's okay too. You know, we can kind of flex things around, we can take things from them, you know, we are all in it together. And I think that's really, really important. So that's kind of my key focus really. Mental health, um, you know, it goes without saying, we've got a vaccine for, for COVID. We haven't got a vaccine for this global mental health crisis that we have, which, you know, for me, 2021 is going to be really, really tough in the respect of, you know, people are going to start being vaccinated. People are going to be then looking to say, well, can I get back into the office? There's going to be people in their team that are not going to be vaccinated. The psychological impact of that's going to be bigger than probably going into lockdown in the first place. So I think, you know, we're already starting to think about what do we do? How can we support our people through that process without really knowing when, when that's going to be? We don't know when the vaccines come in. So um, I think that's going to be a huge challenge for lots of people, you know, lots of employers like us. So it's just about making sure we've got the space this year and our kind of plans to, to make sure that we're prepared for that. Very good points. The, the the manager one I think particularly as well we we had a planning day ourselves yesterday and we were talking about what do we think our clients are going to be looking for this year and and one of the fundamental things all the team agreed one was all the leaders and managers the support that they're going to need because I think a lot are really struggling now they you know they've had the Christmas break but what we're finding just from a few conversations we've had already is that they kind of ran out of steam by the end of last year um so actually how do we support them and really help get them their energies back and support them to make sure they've got those opportunities and I think we was our team we've been running quite a lot of like team sessions with managers you know bringing managers together a bit probably sounds a bit like your connect Naomi but you know doing some little interventions and sharing learning and getting them sharing learnings with each other and the feedback on those has been overwhelming how great it's been just to come together and share and just have a bit of time and space and I think a lot of it is just about that time and space and some opportunity to share learning and learn some new stuff as well yeah. it's great to hear that that's you know such a focus for you in 21 especially when we were saying we thought that's probably what people would need <laughs> far-sighted it's great to hear so what do you think Nat yeah I think just building on that I think the interest in development will be around the trust um, and how we can actually help managers to free up some of their capacity. Um, a lot of the time you've talked about is the squeeze middle. It's, you know, we encourage managers to empower, but often I see managers that aren't empowered themselves. And I'm hoping that when we talk about flexible and agile working, 
we will equally mean trust and allowing people to be managed on their performance in a way that's less about how many hours you're doing, you know, that whole presenteeism, have I seen you in the office, all of that has changed and hopefully we'll move to a place that's about outputs and productivity and that trust and um, that our employees are able to do what we want them to do, that freedom, that autonomy. And so I really hope that we use it as an opportunity to drive that change because it's a long time coming and it's probably one of my biggest frustrations is that micromanagement and that myth around performance management. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that as well. So I was um, on Monday, we had a Engage for Success. We have like a regional ambassadors meeting once a month. And they were talking on that about how many businesses are actually monitoring and tracking like keystrokes and, you know, what time somebody started and how many letters per minute people are typing and it, it was horrifying for me to hear that that's going on they were talking about you know we've got to move around because that's not trust at all is it that's totally and utterly um yeah gonna yeah totally disengage people mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's such a great point that we've got to you know how do people really just let go and and trust really just trust people they've been amazing this year why can't yeah. we just trust them to continue to keep doing the same Exactly. And also, I think the other thing is, from a communications point of view, the um, I think actually in some cases, and it sounds like this is the case with you and Benedon, that uh, your communications have actually gone up a level because of the um, COVID crisis and continued, you've, con you've learned from that and continue, will continue to build on that. And I think that's the same for a lot of organisations because they've had to when you aren't in the office, you don't have those kind of subliminal water cooler conversations. And actually sometimes they don't even happen anyway. So it's been a lot more structured conversations. And we've had that in, I've had that in my own business, which has been, we've talked every day, like, and I look forward to seeing my team every morning at nine o'clock, even if it's just for 10 minutes, you kind of think, oh, they're all there. And, and they get, um, so what, you don't need to track what anyone's doing because you, you should be talking to them, shouldn't you? Mm. I think we've been, um, again, using teams and technology, we've found so many efficiencies, you know, we used to do business updates, which to take two days, because we've got a boardroom to, to sort of shunt people through, and now we can do it in an hour, and we can get everybody on, and, and that enables us to do it more frequently, so we do it every two weeks now, so we get, and actually the participation has improved as well, because people are in the comfort of their own homes, so they don't have to put the cameras on, so they've got a question for the CEO, they use the chat functionality, and, and again, I think the fact that people see the CEO in his, in his, in his house, it just breaks so many boundaries. And I think it really has created a more of an informal culture for us. And um, it, it just feels like, I mean, we've always been a friendly organization. That's always been one of the real kind of, Michelle will tell you one of the nuggets of Benenden, but it's really kind of broken through hierarchies and done all the things that as OD practitioners have been probably trying to do for a while now. Um, but yeah, it's been great. And I think definitely there's, there's some key nuggets like that that will take forward whatever hybrid model we'll end up in um, because it really has changed how our, our people work and perceive our leadership team. That's, be, that's yeah. fantastic. This has been a brilliant chat. Thank you so much, Naomi.